the compassion of our grand predecessor predecessors, all transmitters, and every one of you for giving me this opportunity to learn to speak in today's class on virtues of the mouth, the art of speaking. So, um, what I did was there is this two two scriptures in Chinese. <coughs> One is virtues of the mouth, the other is the art of speaking. <laughs> so some are duplicates, so what I did was I combined the two. And I that's the title, <laughs> okay? Um, so we are all born with a deadly weapon that we never thought of it as a deadly weapon. And that is what? Our mouth. Is that, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. And that is controlled by our emotions. If we're happy, we laugh. But if we're angry or we're unhappy, we what? We use harsh words. Okay, and words can kill. So that's why we call it a deadly weapon. So most of us speak with whatever is in our heart and mind because we use our human nature. So when we're speaking, we should use our Buddha nature to guide us. Okay. So when we use our human nature, we're not only hurting the other party, we are causing a bad karma for ourselves. And once spoken, our words can never be taken back. So always be careful what we say to the other party. So this is the Buddha scripture. If there's something on our mind, we say it gently. When we have something that bothers us, we speak to the other individual gently. Okay, so this way they do not get offended and they do not become angry. Certain matters must be spoken discreetly and not in front of a group of people. So always approach the other person um, in privacy. Don't just uh, blurt it out in front of several people. It's not only embarrassing for the person that we are speaking to, it is also embarrassing to us that does the speaking because you get all these people watching you and as a cultivator, we got to watch ourselves, what we say to the other party. If it's not important, if it's not an important matter, listen to others speak. It's more important to listen to other people rather to, than to speak ourselves first. Always pay attention to what they have to say. Unless it's an important matter, we always allow the other person to speak first, okay? Some people have a bad habit of speaking nonstop, and they don't allow the other person to speak a word, okay? So this is where etiquette and manners come in. So when we speak, we also have to let the other party respond to whatever we are saying. If there's good news, say it quickly. Good news depends on whether it is our good news or other person's good news. If it's the other person's good news, it is not our news to speak. Okay, but if it's our good news, it also depends on who we are speaking to. Because not everybody will be happy for, to listen to our good news. So always be careful who we speak to and what, we, what kind of news we are giving them. If it's grateful and thankful words, we have to speak them often as lecturer Ty just covered, always have to be grateful and thankful every day in our life. <coughs> okay, so remember, it is not, um, it, okay, when we are grateful and thankful, we also have to be grateful to not only heaven, but to the people that have helped us in our life, okay. It's not their responsibility or their obligation to help us. But when they are so kind to help us with whatever matter it is, we always have to be grateful and thankful to them. And also the next time they ask us, we always have to remember, 
okay, we should pay that generosity back to them, okay, and don't just turn them out, off, okay. So always be thankful and grateful with everything we have in our life and with whoever our family members, our siblings, our good friends are, okay. They don't come easy, but because they are in our life, that means we have a karma with them, and it is time to let go of everything and pay back our karma. If it's a minor thing, say it with a sense of humor. Minor matters should be said with a sense of humor because if we don't if we don't joke about it, that means it's serious. So if we say it as a, with a sense of humor, that means it's just a mi minor matter. Okay. So and at the same time, people don't get offended or get hurt by it. If it's an important matter, speak properly. Important matters should be spoken uh, properly, carefully, and to the point. Okay. Because when when it's an important matter, sometimes time is of the essence. So we must speak very quickly to whoever we are giving the message to. Some people they tend to speak for half an hour and around and around the topic, but ne never hit the target, okay? So half of the time, we have no idea what they're saying. So always speak to the point and speak carefully and properly. Clearly. And clearly. Sometimes you hear people talking, and we have no idea what all that talk was about, okay? So always be clear. If we heard the news from others, do not say it. We, if we did not hear the news directly from that person, we should not tell anybody about it. Because news get travel fast and it get twisted. Okay, so news that was originally spoken to the first person after it travels to 20 people, the message is all twisted and all wrong. Okay, so that is why we don't say it unless it's our news, okay? If it's a painful or hurtful matter, think of the person before speaking. If it's a painful or hurtful matter, we should always be careful and thought it out before we speak. Be very careful who we are speaking to and always uh, think and filter through our mind what and how we should say it to, okay? How we, we should say the painful and hurtful matter because we have to say it to the person as gentle as possible so they don't feel worse than they already do if they hear the, the, the news. So always be careful how we say it. If it's words of apology, say it first. Words of apology should always, always <coughs> be constantly said. One word of apology can prevent many conflicts among others and maintain harmony. So even if we are not in the wrong, if we can um, admit to the fault and apologize so there is peace among the people, then that is a very high virtue. Okay, even if we are in the wrong. It takes a lot for someone to admit a fault when it is not their mistake, okay? So if everybody said, I didn't do it, they did it, I didn't do it, they, hey, I stepped forward and he said, I'm the one that did it, I'm sorry, okay? So it brings peace and it, what, closes up the matter. So people don't start accusing more other people, okay? So words, also words of apology. As an adult, we should always teach our children at a very young age. Because if we <clears throat> can show to our children, hey, uh, an apology is very natural, okay? And if I can show my child, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. If I can show my child, then the child will learn from us and in his or her lifetime later, 
they can apologize without even thinking twice. Okay, so we as an adult should set a good example for the children, and then it can pass down from generation to generation. If it's words to encourage others, feel free to speak. Words of encouragement should always be spoken. Okay. Um, it can make a big difference in a person's life and in their cultivation. So we all need to be encouraged in our whether it's in our personal life or in our temple life. Okay, especially in the temple, we should always try to encourage other Tao members to come and learn and practice what they have learned, to encourage them to. Uh, to be happy and content and be grateful. Okay, so good and kind words can help anyone, and it can give reassurance and a positive mindset to other people. If it's caring words or words to show concern, please say it more. We should always say kind words and words of concern to others. Okay, to make the other person feel that we care about them. Not everyone in this world has others to love and care for them. Okay, there are a lot of people in this world that are all by themselves. Okay, so always have caring words for. After all, we are all people, and we are all brothers and sisters in the Dao family. Okay, so even if it's a stranger, if they need some kind words, by all means, say it to them. It can make the day better for them, okay? And hope can give people a reason for living, okay? So kind words can give people hope, can give people what? A will to live. That's how important it is. If it's a matter that did not occur, to not speak in advance. When something didn't happen yet, we cannot say it, okay? Because it may not happen. So why say it when it hasn't happened? Then it becomes gossip, and it hasn't happened, right? So always wait till it happens before we say it. If it's important to do, impossible. if it's impossible to do, do not say carelessly or foolishly. Remember, the Buddha said our words and our actions have to be one. Okay. So if we cannot do it, or if it's impossible to do, we don't say it, because then it will make us look what untrustworthy, or dishonest. Okay, so always say what we can do, but not to say what is impossible to do. A lot of people promise something, but it never gets done. That's also causing a karma, because you promise to do something, and you never do it. Okay, so always think before we say. If it's words of comparison or contrast, we cannot speak. As a cultivator, we cannot speak words of comparison or contrast. Okay, we are all the same. We all have the same Buddha nature. We cannot uh, look at other people differently because we are all the same. Okay. So be very careful. There shouldn't be um, any comparison uh, or bias among humans because it will also cause a karma and it will also hurt the uh, other person. Okay. If it's a present news, do not say it urgently. Present news can change. Okay. So we have to. We can wait to say it. We don't have to say it urgently because if it changes, then that news is no longer valid. Okay, so if it's a matter that hasn't happened yet, speak at that time. This is the same as what we just said before. Okay, if uh, if something has not happened yet, we don't say it until it happens. If it's news, if it's happy news. Consider the circumstance, then say it. If it's happy news, we have to think. Um, think of the people we are saying it to. 
or consider if it will affect the other person. If there, if we know in the back of our mind that that person we will be telling our happy news to, will feel envious or jealousy, we don't say it to them. Okay. Not everybody will be happy for us. We only say it and share it with people that will be happy to for us. Okay, because then we will cause them to have a heart and mind of envious and jealousy. If it's an uncertain matter, may not necessarily speak. We don't say any uncertain matter until it is certain. It's not necessary to speak uncertain matters, because it can cause wrong messages to spread, and then becomes gossip, and all that news will be untrue. If it's words of debate, endure it and do not say it. If we have words that will cause a conflict, it is best not to say it. It may lead to bigger problems among people. Any bad news or words that cause others to argue, it's best not to say it and keep it to ourselves. If it's a dangerous matter, we speak loudly. If the best is to have a microphone, <laughs> okay. But of course, we don't have a microphone. Uh, so if it's a dangerous matter, we gotta speak loudly and fast. Okay, so because this is a matter of saving lives, if it's um, if like for example, if there's a fire, we scream aloud. Okay, so people can run to the door and get outside. So we don't take our sweet time to say something like that. If it's other secret, no need to say it. Okay, other secret is not our secret. That's their secret. If they want to say it, let them say it. And if it's a secret. We're not supposed to say it anyway, okay? If it's one's own matter, first listen to our Buddha nature on how to speak. This is where we think before we speak, okay? We use our Buddha nature to guide us, so we will not be bragging or sound proud of ourselves. Ask ourselves if what we are going to say will cause other people. To have jealousy or envious again, so if it's best left alone, then we it's best not to speak of it. If it's a disagreeable matter, concern oneself with facts and not with individuals when speaking. So these are words of conflict again. If we say it, it may cause an argument. We must face the fact and speak of the actual facts before we speak. Okay. Focus on the issues instead of personal emotions when we speak it. Be very careful with our words, so a small matter does not get blown up into a big matter. If it's words that will hurt others, do not speak. Hurtful words we keep to ourselves. Best not to speak,、uh, which will cause bad karma. If it's to deny others' words, we cannot speak. Okay, this is like. To say something that the other person has said is untrue, so we keep it to ourselves. We don't say it. We just、uh, let it go, unless it is a matter that will harm other people. Then that is different, okay? But we got to be very careful how we speak and how discreet we are. If we, it's words of complaint, even if spoken, will still have no purpose. So if we speak words of complaint, things will not change. Even if we complain about it, so why speak of it, right? So we will be wasting our time and efforts. So might as well keep it to ourselves. If it's words to be proud of oneself, there's nothing worth saying. Being proud is being arrogant, and there's nothing to be proud of in this world. If we say we are proud that we are rich, there's always People that are richer. If we are proud that we have everything in life, there's always somebody that has more than we do. Okay, so nothing to be proud of, and nothing worth saying, because it will only gain others' disrespect. If it's words to harm others for self gain, why say it? Okay, so the, any th words that will harm other people, we、we'll, we do not say. So. 
there was no reason to say it when it's going to cause bad karma. Okay? And definitely not to say it if we personally can gain something from it. Why gain something from other people's pain? It doesn't make sense. And lastly, the Buddha says, if you are not satisfied with me, please speak to me and not to others everywhere. Okay? So if, if you're not satisfied with me, bring me to a quiet place and tell me directly. Do not tell other people and complain about it behind my back. That is what the Buddha is saying. Okay? The Buddha also says, no harmful words and double talk. No embellishing words of flattery and deceptive talk. No complaining about this and that. What comes out of the mouth is like a pure lotus. It's all goodness. Avoid talking too much and talking about petty matters. We get to the point. Focus on benefiting sentient beings. Manifest good-hearted and effective communication. Proper speech is admired by everyone. Dissolve conflicts, discord in an instant. Say good words. I praise you, you uphold me. Everyone gets along joyfully. Okay? So the Buddha says we must recite this five times a day to self respect, to self reflect and introspect. It will transform oneself, meticulously improve oneself, and apply it in one's daily life. Okay, so let's watch this first video. some important uh, points about speaking okay so go down up down yeah okay so when we speak we should speak slowly and clearly because if we speak too fast it is very difficult for the listener to follow and understand us whenever I come across this person who speak too fast it makes me very nervous I feel very agitated okay and my heart starts to pound real fast, okay? And I wouldn't be able to follow that person. I would get lost. I have no idea what they're rambling about, okay? So that is why when we speak, we must speak very slowly, clearly, and get to the point. The, and also when we speak, we should pause and let the other person respond to us instead of us rambling on and on and on and they're trying to edge in a word and we don't allow them to okay so that's very ill-mannered if we do that holy teacher says when a person is rushed in his talking then he makes himself very angry impatient and worried we speak to get a message across to the listener so if we speak in a tone that is so low for the listener to hear us, 
what is the purpose of speaking. Okay, so when we speak, we gotta speak loud enough for the other party to hear us. Okay, Johnny, I'm not. Pointing you out, okay? <laughs> but I always tell you that we speak, we speak loud enough for the other person to hear us. Because if we are speaking and we're speaking in such a long time, all they hear is watch is our mouth moving. They have no idea what we're saying, okay? Always speak loud enough for the other person to hear. Otherwise, why are we talking, right? What is purpose of us talking if we, they can't hear us? So speak clearly and distinctly and get to the point. I've come across some people who have talked real fast, blah, 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 like a machine gun. And I, have no, I, I, I lose track following them, have no idea what they're saying, okay? And then they expect me to respond. I have no idea what they're saying. I can't respond because I didn't hear them because all they did was blah, 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 blah okay? That's why it's important to speak slowly and distinctly. Also, we have to filter everything through our mind before we open our mouth. Ask ourselves these two questions. Is what I am about to say, will it hurt the listener? Will the other, part, will the other party feel offended? If the answer is yes to any of these two questions, we should not speak, okay? So instead of speaking how we were planning to speak, we can also turn it around a little bit, okay? Make it sound very pleasant instead of very hurtful. Make it sound very gentle instead of very harsh, okay? That's how we should, why we should filter it through our mind first. We as humans tend to just say whatever is in our heart and mind, okay? And the other party will get mad at us and we have no idea why, okay? So always filter through our mind before we open our mouth. Also, whatever we say, a lot of people can misinterpret it. So as a listener, we have to be very careful how to listen to the other party also, okay? We cannot assume that is what they meant. They meant well, and when we listen, we listen to it as a negative comment. Okay. Always turn it into a positive. Because the other party will have no idea why we are upset. Okay. So a lot of times we've got to listen carefully to the actual meaning of what the other person is saying to us. When we speak, we always start with the sentence I, not you, okay? Especially when we are bringing up an issue of complaint, okay? Let's say, uh, for example, like if you're, you're talking to your spouse and you're, ask, you're, you know, you're complaining that you're the only one that takes the garbage out and they never help you? So a lot of times, how do we say it? You never take the garbage out. I'm always the one taking the garbage out. Why can't you take the garbage out? Or do the dishes, right? I'm always doing the dishes. Why can't you do the dishes? Right. Say it nicely with respect to the other party. Start with the sentence I. If we use you, you at the, what, attack. What, you're at, on the attack. So when we say, I would appreciate it if you will help me sometimes to take the garbage out. Or I would appreciate it if you can help me with the dishes sometimes. Okay? So that is a big difference between how we speak to the other party with the you and the I. Especially, we speak to people we are closest to. Okay? It becomes so natural, out of habit. We have to speak kindly to our spouse and our family members. They are not our enemy. Okay? So they are actually our loved ones. So be kind and speak in a soft, loving voice. 
because they are our loved ones, we take them for granted. And because they are our loved ones, we are in the bad habit of speaking whatever is in our heart and mind, whatever tone of voice, right? I was in that situation. I grew up with four brothers. I'm the only girl, okay? So a lot of times when I speak to my brothers, especially three younger brothers, I always like have a very bad tone of voice. So all these years, they live their own life, I live my own life, okay? Until the Tao, I change myself. Now I speak to them with kindness and love and respect. And I find that they respect me much more. I no longer attack them with a very strong tone of voice or blah, 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 like that, okay? I always filter through my mind now and say, okay, even if they upset me, I say, calm down, calm down, speak gently. And that's what I do. So they also don't attack me anymore because I don't attack them anymore. Okay? So with your family members and your loved ones, speak with respect and love. Okay? then you will have mutual respect for each other, more harmony at home. Isn't that wonderful? Okay? The holy teacher says, when we are speaking in class, we te tend to use the word you a lot. Okay? So, in other words, when we are speaking, we cannot say, oh, if you do not, if you are not a filial person, okay, then all the people in the audience listening will say, you don't think I'm filial, <laughs> okay? But however if we use the term we, if we are not filial, okay, to our parents, then they do not feel that we are saying you, okay? So always in class, we use the term we instead of you. Because it, it happened before, by the way, in class. It happened to some members that immediately they would say, are you talking about me? Okay, so that's why be very careful in class. Try, not, try to include words such as please, thank you, excuse me, I am sorry, I forgive you, you are so kind, okay? Include these words in our vocabulary every day. It may sound weird in the beginning, but we do get into the habit of using it daily. And if we can do that, okay, it is what? Expressing etiquette and the Tao to other people. Other people will be able to also follow the way we speak, okay? So we are causing a chain reaction among people. Isn't that wonderful? Just like a smile. You smile to them, they smile to other people. Same thing, same meaning. Just like the way we speak also will give a example to our children at home. So a lot of children take after the parents. How we are, they will pick up. If we use profanity, they will pick it up. Sometimes we wonder, how can a two-year-old use those language? You wonder, what, from the parents, okay? So that is why how we speak at home has a very big influence on the next generation. It is very easy to say the wrong things or use the wrong words. However, we must recognize our mistakes Okay, and try to correct them and not to make the same mistake. So always pay attention to what comes out of our mouth. Once we say it, we can never take it back. And we can spend sleepless nights regretting whatever we say. Confucius says, 
one should be guarded in speech and true in words. If our words are not trustworthy, then others will not want to be close to us, and it would be difficult to gain their respect. There's an old saying: If we have nothing good to say, then we might as well not say it at all. Okay. And our tone of voice can also cause karma when it sounds very rude and mean to the other party. We always have to have a low and soft tone of voice. Okay. So this way, it will not be interpreted as rude. Or us being or yelling at the other party. So just like you know, the Cantonese language is a very harsh, strong, has very harsh, strong tones. So a lot of times, uh, when you hear people speaking in Cantonese, it sounds like they're arguing, right? It's not like the Mandarin, which is a very soft tone. Cantonese, especially in the subway. You hear two Cantonese people speaking at normal tone. It sounds like they're screaming at each other, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's why uh, if we speak in Cantonese, we gotta be very soft and low tone, so other people cannot think that we're arguing. Okay, when asking someone to do something instead of saying it with a command, mm -hmm. ask nicely. For example, if you need the other party to get us a pair of scissors, okay, we will, uh, we will usually just say, "Go get me a pair of scissors." A lot of times, we're gonna find out that person's not gonna bring you a pair of scissors because you do not ask nicely, right? Nobody's gonna take that as a, an order, right? So when we ask nicely, we have to use the word "please." Can you? Please, or would you please get me a pair of scissors? Then immediately that person will get us a pair of scissors. Okay, so very very important is to how we say it to the other party. If there is a conversation between two people, we do not interrupt. This is a very rude habit. Okay. When two people are talking, we don't just jump right in and say whatever is in our mind. We either wait until the two people are finished and say "excuse me," or if it's an important matter, we can jump in by saying "excuse me." I don't mean to interrupt you, but this is a very important, and then we say it. Okay, but don't jump into two people's conversation just because you have something on your mind to say. Let them finish first. Okay. Holy Teacher says, "When we are talking, our words should not be stern. If we talk too much, it will cause others to dislike us. If we speak with deceiving words, others will disdain us. If we speak without thinking, we will bring insult upon ourselves. We should maintain harmonious words and a peaceful manner while we are speaking. We should talk gently and slowly while we are making a speech." Then we will naturally be capable of adapting ourselves to the truth. Being a vegetarian not only means what we put into our mouth, but also includes what comes out of our mouth. Okay, so this includes no false utterances, which refers to saying something untrue in order to cheat others. This also includes using serious words to blame others. Calling other people names, gossip, telling dirty jokes—basically, no false utterances means speaking honestly. Minor false utterances that would include general cheating behavior, such as perjury, telling lies, distorting facts, purposely speaking something contrary to the fact, saying one thing and meaning another. Saying mean words to hurt others, spreading rumors to cause disputes, and saying words to corrupt public morals. Okay, let's uh, take a look at the second video. Wanda was the one girl we claimed we never knew. Lee 
Lincoln High School's homely coming queen. She barely graduated with the class of 92, voted most unlikely to succeed. Rumor had it one that never knew who her daddy was. At least that's what we spread all over town. I guess we always thought that we were building ourselves up with the sticks and stones we threw to break her down. All the years we thought it didn't matter, cause we never saw her cry. And Wanda never asked us why. Do you hurt me and treat me like you do? What have I ever done to deserve this from you? Would you do the things you do if you were me and I were you? Looking back, I see the pain that we put Wanda through. Just where all the fun and games were leading. We didn't realize the damage sticks and stones would do. Cause it was deep inside, Wanda was bleeding. The paper said her death was self inflicted. Was it suicide? Cause the note she wrote said Why do you hurt me and treat me like you do? What have I ever done to deserve this from you? Would you do the things you do if you were me and I were you? Reaction, there's reaction. Broken hearts don't just happen. If you put yourself in their position, there's no good answer to the question. Why do you hurt me? Treat me like you do. What have I ever done to deserve this from you? Would you do the things you do if you were me and I were you? Wanda was the one girl who claimed we never knew. So if we can pay close attention and be very cautious of words and actions, all these unnecessary lies could have been spared. So I'm going to tell you something that happened earlier this month. Um, on the morning of December the 3rd of this year, Mackenzie Adams, a nine-year-old fourth grader, killed herself. Nine years old. She was a victim of bullying. They call her the N word and the B word. Her mother learned about this. She went to voice her concern to the school officials. And the school assured her that they would keep an eye on her. But that morning, she hung herself at her home. After her death, the police found no evidence of school bullying, and the school claimed they knew nothing about it. The suicide rate for ages 5 to 13, 5 to 13, tripled since 2007. I never even knew children that age would even know about suicide, nor how to kill themselves. 
She hung herself. Me at my age, I don't even know how to tie that knot. Know where to hang that rope. Okay, think about it. The children nowadays, they all, a lot of them are thinking of, I guess because there's social media, that they not only get bullied in school face to face, but they get bullied on social media. It causes much more suicides, especially among children. So that is why we have to teach our next generation how to speak kindly, how not to bully other children, and what to do when they do get bullied. Okay. And let's watch the last video. A.D. Williams once said, Imagine what seven billion humans could accomplish if we loved and respected one another. Just imagine. Imagine if there was no greed. Imagine if there was no comparison. If everyone was running their own race, but cheering for all others at the same time. Maybe we'll never see that in our lifetime. But what we all can do is start with ourselves. Start with yourself. Choose to lift others up. Choose to set the example. The example of kindness and integrity. The example of compassion and understanding. There's a quote that says, No matter how educated, talented, rich, or cool you believe you are, how you treat people ultimately tells all. Integrity is everything. It really is. Who you are is far more important than what you have, and it will always be. Who you are is measured by how you make others feel. Be kind to each other. In a world where you can be anything, be kind. Choose to be the change you wish to see in the world. Decide you will not wait for someone else. You will set the example. Be kind because you never know how much that person is suffering inside. You never know the difference your words can make, the difference your presence can make, the difference you can make to one human life. Be the reason someone believes in the goodness of humanity. Be the reason someone else decides to make a difference in others. Be the influence you want to see more of. Always do what is right, not what is easy in the moment. Kindness spreads like a virus. When you do good to another, that person does better to those they come in contact with. You really can make a big difference in the world today and every other day. And Frank said, in the long run, the sharpest weapon of all is a kind and gentle spirit. No one has ever made themselves great by showing how small another is. Be kind and always build others up to the best of your ability. Treat everyone with the same level of kindness that you would like for yourself. Not because everyone is nice, but because you are. Because karma makes no mistakes. Because it is right. Because you have integrity. Because you want this world to be better when you leave than when you arrive. Conclusion, I just want to say that we are now in the best time of the year, a holiday season where everyone gives not only material goods, okay, but also gives of kindness, love, and compassion for one another. And this is the best time to come face to face with those we have held a grudge for a long time, a time to give and ask for forgiveness a time to help those in need. This is all part of cultivation. Even though it's a holiday and a cheerful time, 
not everyone is cheerful. There's a lot of people out there that are hurting, whether it's a loss in the family or an illness diagnosed or even just plain loneliness, okay? Being lonely is not the same as being alone. Some, a lot of people that have families are very lonely, okay? So people don't think of loneliness as a problem, but it is a greater public health concern than obesity and smoking combined. If we find ourselves being lonely, we should reach out to somebody. Okay, don't just wait for others to reach out to us. Reach out to somebody and talk to them about it. This, because this can lead to depression, which can cause other serious illnesses. A lot of people are willing to help out there. So don't be surprised to reach, to, to reach out to them and they are willing to help. It is a time to bring kindness and care into the world. We can go and knock on someone's door. We can give them a phone call and stay in touch. We can start connecting and reconnecting with the people. Don't just save these acts of kindness for the holidays. We can find a way to give love to others every day. Last year, the highest rate of suicide, about 23,854 people committed suicide. We must also instill in our next generation at a very young age about the value and importance of helping others, to give back to those less fortunate than ourselves. So I found this quote, when someone else's happiness is your happiness, that is love, okay? So let's all follow the Buddha's teachings of the virtues of the mouth and the art of speaking. We can set a good example in the outside world for others to follow, and hopefully this world can change for the better. I thank all of you. If I have said anything wrong, I ask the Buddha for uh, their forgiveness and the transmitters and every one of you to point out my errors. Thank you. Okay.